fill out a form, so they'll meet you at the uh, either Edison Town Hall or Woodbridge uh, Health Center or, or different places. But again, uh, it's a, it's, it's not not that complicated. And the other thing is, you know, uh, I was telling a couple uh, last week. I goes, your executive is going to bring in professionals to do things that they themselves aren't go aren't going to do. I'll say, yeah, the attorney does some of the legal work. The accountant might do the final tax return. I'll say, yeah, uh, the cleaning should uh, the cleaning cleanup should be done by uh, one eight hundred chunk of cleaning companies. You know the. Ex not the executor, well, you know, because a lot of times the executor is punishing themselves and doing all this, like, all the all the dirty work. He goes, "What? What do you want to do that for? H have someone else? Have someone else do it?" So now, also, um, some you want to have one per. The reason why there's one executor one, one executor two, someone got to be the captain of the ship. Because sometimes, on the other hand, they don't agree. And I've had two brothers that were co-executors where they couldn't agree upon what color the sky was. <laughs> Executor number one, the one brother says the sky's blue. The other one says it's gray. You're stupid if you've always been stupid. You know, they're fighting over couches and dumb stuff. I remember the judge saying, he goes, fellas, why don't you guys go out and get a cup of coffee? And there's probably some good times when you were younger. You're both getting some money. You know, go, go out and like, uh, you know, try to sit down. You know, doing your will, though, uh, no. you, uh, we ask people about life insurance and assets that have direct beneficiaries because remember, uh, a will can't change anything that you have as the direct beneficiary. So, for example, like uh, if you have like uh, uh, investment accounts, four hundred one k, those go directly to whoever your beneficiary is. Will can't change that. If you have life insurance, whoever is the beneficiary. Um, you know, so I also recommend people, unless you're a thousand percent sure who your beneficiaries are, contact the company and you know get in writing and put that in. Because sometimes someone will say, "Hey, I want this account to go towards this kid in particular." Um, so, who's going to get your stuff? Yes, sir. Is that hold true with a regular brokerage account, just yes. stocks and stuff? Yeah. The question, the, and you get a book. The question is. Uh, Could I get one? No, because you haven't asked a question. Uh, uh, you haven't asked a legal question. Because that's usually no, so. So what? Um, uh, whoever you have on your brokerage account or life insurance, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was married for 15 years, and I found out one of my life insurance policies. My dad was still the beneficiary. I, I assumed, I changed it. Uh, assumes always the worst word. On say so yeah, this lady assumed one time she had enough gas to make it from Cocoa Beach, Florida to Orlando Airport because with a rental car you could bring it back empty. But they didn't mean so empty that you run out of gas on the side of the <laughs> interstate. Uh, and my, fortunately, my wife didn't do that a second time. Oh. <laughs> um, so again, so sometimes you you you, you uh, if you're not 100 percent sure. You get a printout from the company. Don't rely upon a phone call because a phone call is no good. A lady came to see us. Uh, her dad filled out a form that she was going to be the beneficiary of uh, his annuity, a big, a big ticket item. He showed her the form. He said, you know, and the lady said, I saw him put an envelope. He dies seven years later. The company goes, we have no such form. Let's see. Uh, she assumed that he was gone. You know, did he maybe like show her this but never do who knows but it's important to follow a follow now you want to try to figure out you know it's okay who's going to get my stuff and now that it is no uh there's no aside from not having your spouse be penniless there's um you know you decide who's going to get your stuff so more and more people are saying hey you know what let's say yeah uh my kids are doing okay but i'd rather have it go towards my grandkids because if I give it to my son or my daughter, my son will buy a boat, my daughter will buy a $20,000 piece of jewelry, uh, or go on an expensive trip, and I didn't work so I didn't work weekends so that they could be, but, and, uh, you know, taking, you know, and college now is so expensive, especially, you know, private school, that, you know, uh, you know people go, serious. you know, the guy goes, when I went to college, I was able to work part-time and pay everything, or, you know, I goes, no, 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 you were on the GI Bill, Mm -hmm. You know, so like you know, you that covered your books. Uh, but my my son uh, went to a University of Miami because he liked warm, and 
back then it was only forty-five thousand dollars a year ten years ago. See, and now it's it could be twice as much. So you have who your beneficiaries are, and uh, you know some people. You know, a lady said, "Do I have to treat all my kids equally?" I goes, "No, it's whatever you want." She goes, "Well, one of my kids I don't uh, uh, hear from much." I goes, "Well, did he get uh, did he get a card or call for your birthday during the summer?" No. Did he get a card or a call on Mother's Day? No. How about last Christmas, a card or a call? No. Well, your question is one that should leave that person anything because they haven't you know, shown an interest in you. And that person is also going to be the, the loudest, angriest person after you pass to say, where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? They're going to be calling the executive. I want my money now. No, they'll leave them anything. I'd say, yeah. We had a little lady. She didn't have uh, children. Her husband died. Her sister died. She left it to neighbors the church and people that were nice to her. And those people were nice not because they go, oh, I can't wait till Mrs. Uh, S dies, I'm gonna get some of her money. No, because they were nice people. Because why should, why should I let strangers in California, you know, my cousins get something. Um, I'd rather have it to people that are, are nice around me. Now, some people have what's called a specific bequest. What's a specific bequest? Sometimes someone will say, listen, I wanna leave $10,000 to my church. I want to leave like uh, $20,000 uh, up front to each of my grandchildren before my kids get anything. Um, you know, sometimes a lady said, listen, I want my jewelry to go to my daughter, my granddaughter, because I know if my son is the executor, he will bring it to cash for gold and say, what do you give me for this junk? What do you give me? I'd say, yeah. Sometimes the guys have like, um, uh, you know, uh, there are collectible baseball cards or firearms, and you know, the, the daughter's the executor. The baseball cards go in the garbage can, and the firearms are usually just called the police and goes, Hey, take these out of the house. I don't, I don't want them. I don't even want to bring them to the uh, dealer to have them sell it. So, now in addition to specific bequests, sometimes we have what I call the reverse specific bequest. That is, I make no bequest to. X person. You don't leave them a dollar, or you don't put a reason, you know, because that is your right, but it should be it should be specific that that you're leaving them out. Um, someone you know sometimes someone goes, well couldn't that person uh, challenge the will contestable? Yeah, anyone can contest, but first of all it costs a lot of money. I'll tell you. And they have to serve uh, they have you know uh, you know I mentioned three thousand dollars just to go in front of a judge. It would cost them more Lawyers don't take those cases on a contingency. They say, okay, you know, sometimes people say, I want to contest whatever. I goes, okay, um, how much money do you want to spend? Because uh, if we're going to uh, fight it, you're going to come in with a check for uh, seven grand. Oh, I don't want to spend any money. And my answer is, well, I don't want to spend any of my kids' money either. I'd say, uh, so you've answered your own question. Uh, you know, so but it should be, it should be in it. Yes, sir? Isn't there a... Um uh, like a minimum amount that goes to your, your children? Yeah. The question was, is there a minimum amount that you need to leave to your children? And the answer is no. You don't have to leave them anything. Uh, if you want to say, listen, I'm leaving everything to uh, my uh, my friend at the Elks Club, That is your that as long as you're competent so in the head. That's with a will, you mean? Or without, without a will. will yeah. Without a will? Yes. They, they and, you know, this kind of the sad thing is with when there's no will, it gets divided equally. In one of our, you know, uh, in one of our states, what there was three kids. One of them had died, and the grandson that hadn't spoken to grandma in a decade was the loudest person. When am I getting my money? When am I getting my money? That person deserved zero, but under the law, they they get. So don't, I mean, don't put all stuff. I'd say what happens a lot of times is people go, well, I'm kind of busy with Thanksgiving. I'll get I'll get to it afterwards. Oh, I'm kind of busy with Christmas. Oh, well, it's kind of cold and snowy out. I'll do it once it gets nicer. And then it's the summer, and then it's the then it's the year ahead. You know, um, you know. So, you know, get these. Yes, sir. Um, I have it. I have. Good. It. Thank you. How'd you get it? Yeah, I took it there. Uh, you oh. stole my book. You <laughs> just gonna stole my book. See, I should get one. You stole my book. Yes, sir. Uh, Dan, don't let him take my stuff. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So, 
out of uh, if one of the spouse dies, yeah. it automatically goes to the s another spouse. Or well, well, the your is that who's the executor? Who gets your stuff? So if someone's married, I'd say if there's no will, no will, no right. will, the spouse automatically gets it. But that's bad planning because there's a lot is extra work. But then the second spouse is not going to live forever. Exactly. You know, so right. you want to get it done. So you know, part of the reason why is you want to pick one, you know, uh, either spouse. And sometimes we don't make the spouse as the executive, not because we don't care about the spouse, but because that spouse can't get around. Our rule of thumb is if the person can't drive to the circuit's office and walk up two or three steps then they probably shouldn't be the, uh, the executor. You know, because, you know, not because we're anti, you know, senior citizen, but because they just physically don't have the ability to do it. If you have 200 kids, <coughs> I can easily do it. Um, you know, one of, one of my clients, I said, listen, you know, you know, your wife seems like a nice person, but don't make her the uh, uh, executor because like, uh, her command of English isn't that good. I'd say she doesn't, she doesn't drive. And she's not going to have a clue what to do anyway, so she's going to be really, your your son's going to be doing all the work anyway. Just make him do it, okay? Yes, ma'am? Does the executor get a certain percentage? Okay. Your... The question is, does the executor get a percentage? And the answer is yes, if they want to take it. Mm. There's a thing called the executor's commission. So the executor can take an executor's commission, um, and the executor's commission is... Uh, five, uh, it's five percent of the first two hundred thousand dollars, and that's ten thousand dollars. Then three and a half percent of the rest, up to a million dollars. But when it's a what I call a basic estate, where it's getting getting divided amongst the kids, I usually tell the executor, if everything goes smooth, don't take the commission because it will create a lot of times hard feelings. And sometimes they ask them, do you plan on seeing these people at, uh, at uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, like uh, weddings, funerals, yes. Then don't be overreaching. However, we use that sometimes as the hammer or the, or the, uh, or the carrot, uh, where at the end of the matter, at end of the estate, when we're ready to divvy it, uh, everything up, the executive usually has what uh, we call an informal accounting. And in the informal accounting, they have a list of you know, what monies came in, what the expenses were, the checks, and then they say, okay, this is what uh, this is what everyone's getting, and everyone has to sign a form called the release and refunding bond, and that, that's one of, the only other thing has to be filed with a surrogate other than the will. So, every once in a while we have someone that doesn't get things done right away. You know, we mail it out to all four kids, and we don't get it back from one of them. You know, uh, so, then we send a second letter out saying, Okay, uh, we've gotten the release of refunding bonds from everyone except for, you know, <clears throat> Brother X, you know, who lives in New York State. And that means that no one can get uh, their money until either Brother X signs or we have to file a complaint or to show cause in front of a Superior Court judge, and that's gonna, and that's gonna delay every, everyone getting their money for another year. Let's see, yeah. And if I have to do this, I was originally not going to take a commission, and uh, but because I'm give, I, I would be given all this extra work because this person did sign it, I'm going to take a commission now. I'm saying it. And by the way, um, Brother X's uh, address is this, and this is his phone number, and this is his email. And everyone gets on the on the phone. Yes, ma'am, you had a question. Yes, now already. And now you Finally. get you get the very last book, the law <laughs> points you. for seniors. I have a good question for okay. you. Okay. I don't know why you said more than one executor is not good. Two is better than one. No, you have one executor, number one, and then a successor executor. So there's one counter ship. There's one steering wheel in the car. One person drives that steering wheel. Right. If that person can't do it, a second person does it. I you think know, we would call co-executors. Co-executors is terrible. Right? Anyone's writing stuff down. I already went through. Never have co-executors. It creates twice as much work. Everyone got it. Uh, two people got to sign every check. Okay. And every once in a while, someone said, "Well, I will." Okay, listen. Let's see. I can only give you uh, good advice. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Mr. Mr. M. No, Mr. K. Came at one time, and uh, I. It's right here, a sizable state. 
and we went through all the things that I suggested to reduce at the time estate taxes, and uh, then he came in like a you know good and I put in like you know the proposal and I mean, what could be done, and then he came in and he goes I want to read more, and I says Mr. Mr. K, you don't need to read anything, I've read for you, and I said I look young, but you know I've I've been do I've been doing this for a little while. I, I go to seminars. I I got, I've written a book for the ABA. Take my advice. You don't need to go and read anything. Well, I like to read more. Okay, fine. Two years later, I get a call from the door because the guy died, wanting to know if I had his will. And he goes, No, Mr. K wanted to read up more about this. When I didn't need a knee surgery, I didn't want to know what the doctor was gonna do. You know, I call Rutgers track cards. Hey, who's the best guy you got for knees? Gives me this guy going, yeah, you need this. Okay, good. Okay, let's 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 get it done. I didn't watch any YouTube videos because that would gross me out. I didn't <laughs> read about it. I don't want to know. I just want to be able to when when I kind of get up, he say he's gonna say, okay, uh, we did a good job, and uh, and he also made sure that you know, uh, I did one time I had a different procedure on my heel, and I asked the doctor uh, about. Uh, you know, tell me about some of these like new laser techniques that they use. And this was 20 years ago. And he goes, let's say, he goes, that's bone. He goes, they don't have a laser laser hard enough uh, or it's strong enough to cut through your heel. And he goes, you know, um, it was maybe the military, but that's that's all secret. He goes, no, we take a hammer and a chisel and we. Oh, and he, goes, <laughs> he goes, but we give you a local first. He goes, well, I would hope so. You were taking a hammer and chisel to my heel. When I went, uh, you know, went back to him after the procedure, he goes, hey, Kate, he goes, Kenny, do you remember how you asked me about a new technique? He goes, I read uh, a, uh, in a journal, there was a doctor in Australia that just started doing this and they have good results. He goes, but do you want to be the first person in the United States of America that we try this on with lasers? I goes, no, 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 I want to be the uh, 10,000 successful person that you've done it on. Uh, but we're also talking about, you know, that's why I told people this. I'd say, forget about what you read. A lot of, beware of cheap and free. So everyone, Southern people write stuff down. Okay, write down, you know, avoid cheap and free. Um, make sure, if you already have a will, make sure it is a self-proving will. If you don't have a will, I will do a self-proving will. The old way before the law was changed, I'd say, Person saw Can you yes, say that a little slower? I can't oh, quite yeah. get that. Self-proving will. Self-proving? Yes, you want to make sure you have a self-proving will. The old way, let's see, the person signed and then the two witnesses signed. But then one of the two witnesses had to go uh, and sign papers in the surrogate's office to say they witnessed the will. And it became, you know, oftentimes difficult to locate witnesses. You know. I remember my grandmother passed, we finally located a witness, and the lady goes, I, I can go to the circuit's office, my fee's $500. My dad goes, we're not paying you $500. The lady goes, well, let get the other witness. Well, she's dead. Yeah, my fee's $500. <laughs> now, we could have said, screw you, we're not paying, but then we would have paid 3000 or so more to go and file this release or and go through the, the court system so we had to pay the extortion. So, the, when the law was changed, it means that a uh, person signs, the two witnesses sign, the attorney uh, or notary signs, then there's a self-proving affidavit, person signs again, the two witnesses sign again, and then the attorney or notary signs. This way, you don't have to locate witnesses, you don't have to pay witnesses, and that was a good change to the law. Now, cheap things that I see online don't have that. What that means, you gotta find, you gotta find a witness. And I, I, I used to see a law office in Carteret advertising, goes, uh, we the wills cheap. You know, we charge seventy-five dollars. And someone says, "Hey, hey, Kenny, why, why do you guys charge in like you know four hundred, whatever?" It goes well. We do it right, and they do it wrong. They do it the old way so that they can then extort the five hundred dollars out of you. And I ran into one of the attorneys in the office uh, in Carvet, and I said, "Hey, Willie, you guys are gonna get in trouble for not doing self-proving wills. Like that's like a doctor not doing the surgery the whole way through, so he can bill the insurance company a second time." for another procedure. And he said, well, if someone wants a self-proving will, we'll do it for them. And I said, no one in Carteret knows what a self-proving will is. You know, 
Now, half the attorneys don't know what a self-approved will is. Now, also, make sure, and a couple people write stuff down, make sure the will says the word no bond is required. Now, I mentioned if there's no will, there has to be a thing called a bond taken out. I'd say, and that's more or less an insurance policy that the person in charge isn't going to steal. But typically, you trust your person uh, that you pick, you know, oftentimes the spouse or the kids. So, but make sure the will says no bond is required because otherwise, what often happens is these free and cheap things online don't have that magic word, no bond is required. So, how much have you saved by doing that? You save nothing, you're spending more money because uh, the will doesn't say no bond is required. Now, read the will ahead of, yes ma'am. So, um, if we're each writing separate, we have yeah. a separate will. Yes. Am I making my husband the executor? Yeah, typically you have your husband as the executor one. Oh, and then? And then one of the kids executor okay, two. Makes sense, the only time though. we don't make the spouse uh, the executor is because of, like, you know, medic medical reasons. Okay. Not because we don't, because, you know, uh, you know, one of my clients was in, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's 93 years old and he can barely see the paper, you know. You know, he's signing, he goes, I go, and I said to the daughter, now, now, we're not, not because I don't like your dad, because I've known him for 30 years, but he, it makes no sense to have your mom or your dad being the executives, both are in, you know, walk, walkers, and can't get, and can't get around. Uh, now, what we, we do, make sure you read the will ahead of time. Not the legal mumble jumbo stuff, but did they spell your name right? Until, and does it have basically what you, what you want? So in the, uh, the traditional will, it says, okay, everything to spouse, at the kids, if any of the kids shall predecease survive, uh, to their kids, your grandchildren, otherwise it goes to the other ones, you know, uh, and other things, who's going to get your stuff? I always say, I don't need to name who your children are unless there is a question as to who your children are. That's one of my clients. My children's names aren't there. He goes, is there a question of who, who your kids are? No, I have two. Okay, good. You don't need any more. Um, but, yeah. A uh, fellow, uh, I, a lady, um, I was helping her out with mom's estate, and uh, she asked me to look over her will. I picked it up, and I goes, Terry, I didn't know you were married. She goes, I've never been married. He goes, well, in your will, you're leaving everything to your beloved husband, Roger. She goes, I've never been married. He goes, did you read it ahead of time? She goes, no, I went to law office. They said, sign here, sign here, sign here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now, one of my uh, guys, um, did uh, another will, he goes, well, my, they spelled my name wrong. John, didn't you read it ahead of time? Now we signed at the Elks Club bar and it was dark and uh, they just said sign here, sign here, sign here. So typically what we want to do is we want to, uh, we mail it to you ahead of time. Because when we sign, I ask, when we come into the office, we ask everyone three simple questions. Did you read it? Does it contain what you want? Do you have ID to prove where you are? Uh, and it's important. Someone has to say, yes, I read it. You know, um, Occasionally, uh, a kid brings um, their parent in, you know, because they have not done their will. But we're very careful on undue influence, making sure it's what that person wants. Um, but you know, say, uh, but if someone said, you know, you know, you know, daughter brings mom in, does the will, but you know, it's they are signing, and we ask the question, did you read it? Mom says no. Um, then you and then you're gonna have to come back another day. You have to have read it ahead of time. It's not something where I just want someone to go, okay, it looks good. You know, you know. I, I assume you did it right. I remember soon. So, and uh, and uh, <coughs> come and say, oh, uh, mom misunderstood. She did read the will. He goes, no, no, no. We know what we heard. I don't do anything to jeopardize my license. I don't cut corners. If it doesn't smell right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. You know, uh, you know um, oh, uh, you know, Mom, uh, mom wants to sign the house over to me. <laughs> we get that a lot. I'd say, okay, when can when can mom come in and sit down with me uh, just in my office? Well, she uh, uh, she can't get around. She's on oxygen tank, and uh, well, listen, I've been to uh, care facilities, hospitals, people's houses. Uh, you know, charge a couple dollars to go there, but I want two things. I want to talk to the person ahead of time. Uh, and well, first I need an app, uh, I need a certification from the doctor saying they're okay mentally to do the document. Otherwise, I won't do it. If they can't, 
you know, come into the office. And he also wanted to talk to him ahead of time to make sure that that's what they want and not what the other wants. And, you know, the big example is, uh, you know, mom wants to sign the house over to me, okay? I'd say the doctor signs the affidavit, yeah, she's okay, you know, she's, you know, she's sharp, but just, you know, her health isn't that great. Okay, Mrs. B, how you doing? Well, I'd be, she goes, I'd be better if I wasn't on oxygen tank. Okay, what do you want to do? I want to sign the house over to Johnny. Now, for 90% of the attorneys, all right, that's all I need to know. I'd say, I'm making a quick $700, I'll do this, but again, I mentioned about doing the right thing. Mrs. B, how many kids you got? I got three. Well, you understand, Mrs. B, you sign the house over to Johnny, the other two really gonna get nothing because the only thing you really got is the house. Oh, no, I want all my kids treated equally. That's what I thought. Put Johnny back on the phone. <laughs> um, my, uh, my mother-in-law used to call me up every other year because I want to get a trust, and I want to get a trust. And I would say, uh, we watching Susie Orman? She goes, oh, yes. She goes, well, Susie Orman is uh, absolutely right if you live in New York, California, Florida, where probate's very complicated. But in New Jersey, the typical cost of probate is about $150. Let's see. Why should someone want to have a $3,000, $4,000 trust and transfer the assets out of their name to avoid probate? You know, so I usually ask people, why do you think you need a trust? One of the few times where someone wants to have a trust is where they want to uh, hide and shield their assets from nursing home and Medicaid. But that means that it has to be an irrevocable trust. You can't be the trustee. The uh, assets then have to be owned by the trust you spent a big chunk of money, but you have uh, shielded and protected them. Because remember, Medicaid, uh, nursing, home, nursing homes either paid for by you or by welfare. And uh, someone, you know, I was talking to someone recently, he goes, well, the only way that you will be uh, get the nurse, uh, Medicaid to pay is that when, if you become eligible for welfare. You either transfer your assets away, and then five years go by, or put the assets into an irrevocable trust and then five years go by. And it goes, the whole thing about just giving them away is a bad idea um, because you can never predict what's going to happen. Um, there was a fellow, Mr. M, he didn't want to spend the, the three grand, four grand on setting up a trust. He goes, listen, I love both my kids. Half is it's going to my son, half to my daughter. Little deed, half the house to my son, half to my daughter, good. I didn't spend, waste all, I didn't waste all that money on the, uh, on the trust. Um, well, no one predicted his son was gonna die. So all of a sudden, who owns half of his money? Who was $450,000 of his money? His son's wife. Who owns half of the house he's living in? His son's wife. But the um, surviving sister sent a letter to the wife saying, could you do us a favor and give us all the money back oh, and yeah. sign a new deed saying you'll transfer it over? I write it. She was my client. I go, she goes, what do I have to do? I goes, you don't have to do anything. That's your, that, that was your husband's. That's, that's yours. Now, we worked it out where we, we put in money to take care of, you know, I call him the old man. But, you know, that's the reason why sometimes you just don't want to give it away. Also, there's falling out. Let's say, uh, at least if it's in a trust. Let's say they can't, you can't have an argument, and all of a sudden they say, "Okay, Dad, get out, get out of the house," because there's there's upkeep things. Okay, uh, now yes, sir. Are there different tax implications for a trust versus probate, and is it's better a, between revocable and irrevocable? Well, irrevocable trust in New Jersey really isn't worth anything. Uh, in other states, the only thing that ir uh, rev uh, ir uh, revocable trust does is avoid probate. There is zero tax benefits at all. And actually, with a uh, irrevocable trust, you don't own it anymore, so uh, oftentimes you, you're creating a capital gain if, if real estate is sold. So, um, let's say someone owns a house, okay? Um, if, they, uh, if you sell your house and there's a profit, a capital gain, it's okay because under federal law, I think you get $250,000 credit on that capital gain. If you pass away, there's what's called a step up in basis. So when that house is sold after you pass away, there's no capital gain. But if you transfer it to a kid or to the trust, they have the carryover basis. So if you bought the house in Edison for $200,000 and it's sold for 
four hundred. That's two hundred thousand dollar capital gain. If it's owned by the kid, they don't live there. They're paying that two hundred thousand dollars. So you know, I tell people before you rush out and just do these transfers, you know, know about some of these, you know, some of the other issues. Okay, that was uh, a little bit about wills. Let's talk now about power of attorney. Power of attorney. For a lot of people, the power of attorney is more important than the will itself. Because I mentioned this. If I'm married, if I didn't have a will, and a meteor struck me down, my wife gets all the stuff anyway, because it's a first marriage situation. Let's see. However, if I, uh, some dumb kid's driving down the road, and uh, they're looking at their phone and T-bone me, and my arm shattered, my wife doesn't have any legal right to do anything. My wife doesn't have a legal right to talk to doctors. You know, she's just she's just married. So what a power of attorney is, is you're giving the ability to someone that you trust uh, to be able to uh, assist you act on your act on your behalf. Now, with the power of attorney, the power of attorney is either effective right away or only upon disability. So if it's effective right away, um, you know. Then uh, they can they can act for you right now. You're not giving up your rights. You're not declaring yourself incapacitated, but it's effective right away. The only the other way is where it's effective only upon disability, where someone ha there has to be an affidavit by a doctor saying the person is incapacitated. Um, so when it's effective right away, it's durable power of attorney stays in effect if someone becomes disabled. If it, it's if it's effective only upon disability, it's called the springing power of attorney, and only becomes effective if someone becomes disabled, doesn't know from a doctor, then it springs into effect. One of my clients uh, uh, said, Kenny, you're, you're talking legal terms to me. He goes, I'm a carpenter. I need you to use carpenter language to me. I go, okay. If it's effective right away, uh, your son can steal all your money right away. If it's effective only upon disability, your son has to get a note from a doctor before he steals your money. <laughs> Knowing that, do you want, uh, do you trust your son? I trust my son my life. Then just make it effective right away. So again, one fellow said, I'm not sure if I really trust this, you know, I goes with it, then, then you have to decide if you, if you want to do it or not. But without the power of attorney, um, you always hear, you know, we get calls on, I need, the, I need to get power of attorney over mom, dad, or uncle Joe. No. You can't get power of attorney over anyone. They have to affirm it until they come into the office, uh, discuss what they want, and then sign the form. Tell them to the kids, you can't get power. No, uh, the only other, but the only other attorney is go through an expensive and complicated guardianship proceeding where you're asking a court to declare the person incapacitated and incompetent. And I remember I got one of my neighbors in Edison said, oh, I need, I need to get a power of attorney over my husband so I can sign for him at the closing. And I goes, well, he goes, oh, it's your first year, I need power. Okay, good, when can your husband come in? Well, he can, he had a stroke, and he's at the Roosevelt uh, Hospital. I goes, well, is he competent? No, not really. Well, we can't do a document for someone who's not competent. And she goes, well, we have the houses on the market, we have a buyer. He goes, as long as he's alive, you can't, you know, you don't, you don't have, you can't just sign for him. Because it has to, you know, the title company isn't gonna accept that. I remember it was one of the rare times where I got an authorization to talk to the doctor because the question was whether or not the family was going to spend the $4,000 to go through this lengthy guardianship proceeding and the court then has to appoint someone at the person's expense to be the temporary law guardian and go in front of the judge and you know calling up the old Edison Medical Group and speaking to Dr. Collins and he goes, uh, here's, here's the facts. Uh, you know, they want to know if they should spend the money now or save the money for, you know, because we think something's going to happen the next week. And the doctor said, Kenny, that's a God question. We don't, we don't know. You know, you know so, yeah. Beware of, I said on the wills, beware of cheap things online. Same thing with power of attorney. Beware of cheap things. There used to be a problem where a lot of the uh, institutions were, um, You'd have a perfectly good power of attorney done by a reputable attorney and uh, Mid-Atlantic, whatever bank, you know, like, oh, uh, it wasn't done on our form, so we're not going to honor it. So the legislators, in a rare move to do a law that makes sense, say, listen, 
if if uh, if it makes reference to New Jersey statute, <coughs> they do business here. They got to honor it, otherwise they're in violation of the law. However, it has to make reference to Section Two of PL 1991 C 95 Prince C 46 colon 2B-11. And I'm pretty sure some cheap thing you find online is not going to not going to say that. Now, a will that's done in New Jersey is valid in any other state. Let's see. Uh, um, but a power of attorney, if you move somewhere else, you probably should have another one done in that state because there's no uh, Section 2 of PL 1991 in whether well, no, it's Pennsylvania, Florida, whatever. So, um, and I also now recommend that uh, uh, if someone has a power of attorney, um, we sign a new one every, if, uh, every five years or if someone moves because a lot of times, again, the banks and institutions are very difficult when they're not dealing with you personally, when they're dealing with a kid. And what sometimes happens is like one of the, oh, I, the kid goes, I have a power of attorney. He goes, who are you? Um, he goes, well, this, this is a different person. The lady goes, well, that's my married name. Well, how do we know that? Let's see. Or someone says, oh, uh, th this is me, I'm the son. Uh, well, uh, this person's address is this, but your ID says somewhere else. How do we know you're the same person? Oh, trust me. Bank goes, no, no, no. We're not letting you access your father's money where you're saying trust, trust, trust us. So beware of the cheap forms. Uh, does anyone have any other questions on powers of attorney? Okay, good. Okay. The next document we're going to talk about is the living will advanced directive. Uh, there's so many like, uh, advan good advances in medicine that uh, you know people can like uh, you know have procedures that you know let them go back to doing what they're doing. On the other hand, because of advances in medicine, where like uh, you know like uh, you know someone is only being kept alive uh, though unconscious on a machine. So New Jersey was one of the first state to recognize the family's ability to uh, you know. Uh, remove feeding tubes or remove respirators, things like that. But it's important to have a, a living will. Because again, the living will is not a document really for you, it's so your family is not put in that horrible position where there's no living will, and the doctor says, okay, so should today be, should today be the day? Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan, could you like uh, um, give out that, uh, that form to everyone? And if anyone needs a pen, uh, my uh, colleague Dan Fabrizio will uh, give a pen. Um, so, what the, um, what the living will is, is you're giving instructions to hospitals, doctors, and everyone, um, what, your, what your wishes are as, as far as uh, medical. As long as you can talk, hey, you're the captain of the ship, you're not giving away your rights. But what the, um, what the living will does do is you say, hey, if someone's in a coma, irreversible condition, you're giving instructions basically to you know, hospitals and doctors. So, in the living will, there's a section of uh, fluids and nutrition to be withheld or provided. And nowadays, probably 80% of the people say, hey, if there's no hope for me, I don't want to be <coughs> having feeding tubes, I don't want to be kept alive. I remember when in, uh, a doctor asked me, what should, you know, what should we do? Because the lady did not have a living will and um, did not um, have, um, you know, I, I was her power of attorney, but she didn't have anything else. And, the doctor basically was saying, okay, should today be the, and I go, geez, doctor, I feel bad. I mean, you know what the right thing to do if for someone who's 92 years old that's not gonna regain consciousness, but you feel kind of bad because you're the one that's turning the switch off. I couldn't do it for my dog. You know, my dog was sick and like, I spent $16,000 on vet bills. And even when it was the last day, I said, I can't go. I told him, I can't go in. I'd say, yeah. Uh, so, the idea of having the living will is, hey, the decision's already been made. Let's say, uh, uh, there's no hope for me. I don't want feeding. I don't want feeding tubes, fluids, and nutrition. And uh, in the, in, I, um, I put out the living will brochure, and uh, to make it easier for the doctors to understand, we copied from the medical society's language in here, word for word. Fluids and nutrition, withheld or provided. Directive as to medical treatment slash artificial means, like you know, uh, uh, and. 99% of people say, "Hey, there's no hope for me. Uh, I don't want to be. I don't want to be kept alive. I want. I want it to be. I want it to be stopped." Um, so it's important to have because number, 
because you're also, you're p similar to the will and the power of attorney, you're picking a number one and a number two. And it's very important because that person is then the captain of the ship. What we find sometimes is some, one of the kids that wasn't involved with the stuff going on, all of a sudden they barge into the hospital room and goes, okay, I'm in charge now. I'm in charge. Similar to when Reagan got shot and uh, uh, General Haig went on TV, he goes, I'm in charge now. Well, no, uh, the person you pick uh, is the one that's in charge. And legally, there's a federal HIPAA law. The doctors aren't allowed to talk to anyone anyway. So we revised our powers of attorney. We revised our living wills to have a language to say, listen, let's see, under the federal HIPAA law, we're giving power to this person to be able to, uh, you know, ask questions and talk on my behalf. Now, you also, you want to pick you know, yes, sir. Does the living will, so if there's, the living will refers to someone to make a decision on a procedure. Is that the same person as power of attorney? Or is uh, well, it's different? a different doctor, but most people, uh, most people make it the same person. Occasionally, though, someone says, listen, I'm going to have this child on my power of attorney because they're smart with the money, but I'm having this child because, like, uh, she's in the medical field and she's more familiar with some of the medical, medical terminology. So that way they can do it. And funny, you know, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was first married 30 years ago, I was redoing my documents. And you know when you're first married, you're all lovey-dovey and everything? And my wife said, oh, if something happens to you, I could never make, let them like, remove life support. And I goes, okay, fine. I'll just leave my dad uh, as the, uh, in the living will, because he's logical like Mr. Spock. And he would say, okay, this is what Ken put down. We're following that. Now, of course, fast forward, like, uh, uh, 30 years later, my wife would say, so you're telling me that if he gets dead, I get $850,000 tax-free, and I can move to a warm place and, and don't have to live here. Oh, kill him now. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's a point. Now, on the last page of the living will, we usually have a we, want, we have organ donation, yes, and organ donation, no. And are you, I recommend, listen, everyone, no matter what your health, what your age, uh, sign, sign the yes, because you're trying to encourage more and more people to do that. There's a big, long list of people that are dying because they're on the heart transplant list, lung transplant list, kidney uh, transplant list, what, whatever. And, uh, hey, listen, I, I signed it. Like, if I'm dead, you know, you know, they can have whatever, you know, good athletic parts I got. And I asked him, I asked a question at uh, a seminar I attended. What is the maximum age to be an organ donor? And they said, there is no maximum age. I goes, well, what's good on an 85-year-old guy? And they said, skin and cornea. I go, I never thought about that. I mean, listen, I was burned. I'd rather have 85-year-old guy's skin than the, what got burned off me. Um, and I also, and there used to be... Uh, you know, I asked them also what medical conditions are automatic disqualifiers. Because to give to donate blood, it's eight pages long, single spaced. They goes the only disqualifier at the time was HIV, and they removed that. Someone with HIV can be an organ donor, not to you, but to someone else that has HIV. So you know, doesn't cost you anything, doesn't delay things. And uh, before I bring up my uh, colleague, Dan, for brief, oh, yes, ma'am. So one quick question about that. Uh, I know people who are afraid to sign the yes on that, because I know that's on the driver's yeah. license thing, yeah. too, because I said, well, what if they, what if I harvest your organs before you? They, yeah. And yeah. they, they pull my plug just so they can harvest. Oh, God. That was a I've heard, I've heard people say that. That was in, that was in a movie with Mike, young Michael Douglas, and that oh. was in a, a, a Law and Order episode where the doctor was <laughs> going, the doctor um, was going to uh, get a good job, but they found a, uh, a kidney for someone that was wealthy that needed one. Uh, but in a Law and Order episode, they discovered that the doctor had... Uh, um, you know, continued to, you know, it was a bill for morphine. And he goes, wait, if someone's brain dead, they don't need morphine. So that's when they realized that the doctor was harvesting. But again, that was, a, that was a TV show. The doctors are very, very cautious on stuff. You know, it's, and it's, it's more common where 
uh, there's a car crash or you know some kind of crash where all of a sudden they go say, hey, listen, there's no hope for uh, this person. Let's see, what are the chances? And and we're trying to get more and more like if we if we set an example for younger people, younger people will will check off check off the box. Let's see, yeah, um, I'm in oh. Not a legal thing, but some people pre-plan, not pre plan but pre-plan their, like, uh, uh, their, their funeral, let's say, uh, uh, to take the pressure off the family. Because no one wants to be cheap or seem like, you know, uh, greedy, you know, when, when you're at the uh, funeral home. Uh, but I, I, was at, I was at a wake at Costello's in Matusha. I go to the guy, uh, the manager, hey, let me have your, your price list. And I, I filled out the form. Cheapest, cheapest cremation, you know, uh, this way I, 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 and I gave it to my wife. This way, there was no, uh, you know, questioning as to what it is. But on the other hand, I'd say someone passes away, you know, anyone who's ever had a plan a funeral, you go into the room where the caskets are, and the very first casket is the one that's $9,900. The most expensive. You hate to be the one that is like, you know, it seems like you're the cheap one, but this way, if you, uh, you know, kind of uh, write out for people what you want, especially if you don't live with your executors, uh, because this way they need to know where, where stuff is. And uh, I'm not sure if I already, or, already met, but the people writing down stuff, I think is only the original will can be admitted to probate, not a photocopy. You know, it's the original will, um, because a photocopy sometimes is worth as much as a photocopy of a $20 bill you lose. You know, you, know, you can't go to the bank. Yes, sir? Now, you can get, like, say, five originals, right? I'd say, well, they only uh, We only do, because the, the system has been... We do one original, and you keep that because when a new one is done, the old original gets gets ripped up. You know, so most people will go and buy a fire retardant box at Costco and put it with important papers, you know, passport and stuff, you know, under under their bed because under the bed is the wasted space. So um, you know, not you don't you don't. You don't want to put the things in a safe deposit box because oh, okay, the family can't get to the living will or the power of attorney on a Friday night or Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning when it might be it might be needed. So it's a good idea, you know, to make sure that uh, things are where people can get to it. Yeah. But after you have the originals, can you go to New Brunswick and make another original? Nope. No. Ori it's an original new and New Brunswick doesn't make the uh, wills are not docketed anywhere. The wills are only brought to a surrogate after someone passes away. So uh, the will is your property. So, you know, you sign in front of typically the attorney and he goes, okay, let's see, here's your original will, here's your original power of attorney, here's your original living will. Let's see. Um, put them where executive one, executive two can get to them. And also, um, you know, uh, make sure they have access to it. Now, a power of attorney uh, a copy, some many banks will honor. Photocopy of living will, all the hospitals and places will honor. But for the power of attorney, I mean the, the will, only the surrogate, you know, they got their they got their statute, they got their rules. It got to be the the original. Yes, sir. I was just curious with regards to uh, to probate. Yeah. Say for instance, okay, you live in Pennsylvania, but you have property in New Jersey, okay, and your executor, say, lives in Connecticut. Well, it doesn't matter where the executor lives. So, okay, so, so but I was just so, curious, like, when it comes to probate, yeah, so, do, do they, can they so, do that in Connecticut, or do they have to come into... Well, there, there has to, every state where someone has assets, there has to be a procedure. Okay. The main state of probate is where the person's domicile is. The person so, who passed. Yeah, the person who passed. Okay. You know, so, um, you know, it doesn't matter where in the world of the plaintiff the executor is, they have to uh, have it, uh, you know, in the county where the okay. person the person lived. Now, let's see. I mentioned New Jersey. Uh, most people don't need, to, you know, probate's easy. You don't need to have an expensive trust, but Florida is. So people that live have um, a uh, vacation home or winter residence in Florida, we recommend that they have uh, put their property in that state 
into into a trust to make it easier because otherwise there has to be a procedure in every state where someone had had assets okay yes ma'am so i'm always afraid to make a living will because i've heard that because yeah, someone's going to kill you no because <laughs> no. <laughs> i've heard that there's a difference between them withholding food and withholding water nobody so, does anything if the family objects no no i mean oh. that so when you fill out your living yeah. will i'm sure you have to put in whether you want like what you want done and what you w don't want done so if you if you uh you, you're gonna, you're taking home the uh, little little uh, brochure so this we took the language from the medical society so there's a separate section on fluids and nutrition so some people for either personal or religious reasons were saying i want it to be provided to the to the extent medically appropriate let's see uh but um when, when we're first doing these you know literally like uh, 28 years ago a lot of people were saying well my religion does not permit me to do this and that's not correct every religion i mean they're they're against mercy killing let's see they're against the you know uh you know under the new right to die statute that new jersey just passed this summer saying hey listen if you're in a terminal condition you can you can take meds to or not meds but stuff to kill you but uh um you know the important you're not doing it for you you're doing it for the family so the family doesn't have to say okay should we should we put down mom or dad today it's already and again it's to the extent the hospitals will always err on the side of caution you know the family can't say by the way listen we want you to remove life support if the hospital says hey uh dad's getting better <laughs> we know that you don't like to keep visiting because dad is nine years old but no we can't just kill people because you don't want to have to keep on coming here and you want your money does anyone have a did you have a question ma'am oh yes sir i have a question um so on the will going back to that in the original copy can you have a secure digital or electronic format uh okay write this down no <laughs> no <laughs> believe it it's it gotta be in paper form and that's why we mail out the paper we don't send anything by email because we want the people to actually read it because you all know that you never really carefully read the stuff you get sent to you by email you know here's people you know, people are you know and what was happening was people were just looking at the first time at uh 10 59 for their 11 o'clock sign this way you look at it ahead of time um now, if someone can't find their original will, I goes, listen, go get a new one done. My rule of thumb is if you can't find it in 72 hours, I'd say get a new one done because you can't guarantee that you're going to live another 72 hours. And uh, some people, their filing system is uh, big cardboard boxes, and when that box fills up, the next one. Uh, prior to 2003, we used to keep all the originals because we have a very good filing system. But the Supreme Court said the wills are property of the clients and they should be keeping their property you don't keep their driver's license just in case it's needed you know you know so for the same thing okay um i always ask like uh, I'm, I'm gonna stay around for a little while i uh um, i'm asking my colleague uh, dan for a brazy though because um he knows i don't know much about money and finances so uh he's going to talk uh briefly about um 10 or so common financial planning mistakes and then we're over because usually we go to about seven but then we'll st i see the clock says what three o'clock now but i think it's off uh but then we'll uh we'll stay around and, like for a little while while we're clean up and answer some other questions dan fabrizio thank you ken, ken. I'll, I'll answer afterwards i'm only going to speak for about five or seven minutes so i just want to talk on some of the seven most common areas 